Hey guys, ECW fan here, and it's time for another Pawn Shop Pickups. And this is coming to you in May, early May. I'm kind of glad that I was able to go to the pawn shop and pick up some good things. Oh, let me adjust myself there, I had to move my leg. Okay, and uh, before we get into the pickups, I did go by GameStop and I used my $5 coupon on a nice game that I needed for the PlayStation 5. I'm I'm slowly building my PlayStation 5 library up, and um, the library is getting some good games. I've got uh, Lego Star Wars, the Skywalker collection, which is really nice. I've got the, the Spider-Man Miles Morales Ultimate Edition, which has the PlayStation 4 version of the game and remastered and everything with all the DLC, so that's kind of cool. But, and I've got the... Now I've got... Tales of Arise. Uh, this is one of the Tales games that come out. It's really was praised. And I actually found this a used copy of this that they had marked down. And I'm glad that they had the disc, the, I mean the box. Because this was the last used box they had. And it really helped. But yeah, I'm slowly getting the PlayStation 5 games I want. Uh, there's like two or three more. I like to get Guardians of the Galaxy. I like to get uh, Ratchet and Clank. And I think there's one more I can't think of, but I'm not going to really collect heavy for the PlayStation 5 because most of my focus is on PlayStation 3 and 4 games I need to get. And uh, 4 games are starting to become cheap. 4 games are starting to become cheap. But now, let's get into the Pawn, Stop, pawn Shop pickups. And I picked up a lot of good movies and a good Blu-ray. And... Uh, well, let me go ahead and start with the Blu-ray. Now, in terms of classic westerns, there's a lot of good classic westerns. There's Unforgiven, Young Guns, uh, I think Condo is one. I think Shane is another classic western. There's a lot of 60s westerns. Uh, the Cowboys, uh, The Shootist with John Wayne in the 70s. I think that was his last role. where he And John Wayne was dying of cancer at the time. I think he took the role because he knew that was his swan song, and it was really a nice way. Well, John Wayne made a classic 1950s western, and it was called The Searchers. Now, The Searchers was made by John Ford, directed by him, and The Searchers is one of those classic westerns that spans five years of time. Wayne's, uh, Wayne plays a character where his niece and his fam his niece was taken and his family was killed by Comanche Indians. So Wayne's character goes on a search for her and he loses his humanity along the way. He, he doesn't go he goes without thirst. He just drives himself to find his niece by all means. Just the search continues. He doesn't stop. And uh, he's uh, he's helped by a young man along the way. He's helped by a young guy and. Uh, the search, you know, once the search is over, he realizes he has nothing left. He's, there's nothing left for him anymore. His life, you know, he had, he had just taken off from his life for five years to do this and go through all the West looking for his niece. And, and the ending is just one of those moments where he walks out. And, you know, it's, it's a classic Western ending with the searchers and I wanted to get this for my blu-ray collection because like I said it's a classic western and it's one I've watched a few times and you have to really get in the mood to watch it because it's a long western but it's a classic by John Ford and I was happy to find that in the pawn shop now another movie I'm actually going to show these first okay these did not come from the pawn shop actually but a trade I made and I've always said make your trades make it happen and uh I picked up a bunch of pro wrestling DVD box sets for, you know, the guy priced them for. So I already had them. I was like, well, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to go over to Cheap Thrills. I'm going to trade. I'm going to get store credit. And I'm going to trade for two things I need. And I cleared both these movies. So basically, these were pawn shop movies from Cheap Thrills, more or less. I used it for trade credit. And one of them is the Prophecy Collection on Blu ray. And this has four films of Prophecy with Christopher Walken. You see that? Well, here's the unique thing. I've got the DVD set of this. And the DVD set actually has five films. 
Prophecy 2 is not on the Blu-ray set. It's just weird. It's actually on my DVD set. It's just one of those weird things that they've only put four films on here. It's like Prophecy, Prophecy 3, Prophecy Uprising, and Prophecy Forsaken. Prophecy 2 is just not on here. I mean, I'll keep both because I kind of was like, man, that's weird. I said, I'm pretty sure there was five films. And I got home and I looked at it and I was like, okay, there is five films. Why is it Prophecy 2 on here? The next one I got was Ghostbusters Afterlife, which I'm very happy to get. I'm going to finally get to sit down and watch this. I've heard this movie is really sentimental. It's, it's got a beautiful touch. It's got, you know, it's, it's got the original Ghostbusters uniting for the last time. Except, you know, except Egon, you know, Harold Ramis, who had passed away. But this is like a loving touch to Harold Ramis. And Ivan Reitman saved the franchise. Uh, there was a video I saw a couple weeks ago where a guy was like trying to blame trolls for 2016. And yeah, there is an ugly audience out there that doesn't like things like certain movies, certain uh, games. But the, the claim that they sunk the whole 2016 Ghostbusters is, is pretty laughable. The trailer made no sense, which didn't help. Sony's marketing of if the trolls go see this movie failed. <laughs> and by the time they reversed course and realized that if the trolls go see this movie was not working as, a, <laughs> as your push to go see a Ghostbusters film, they kind of pretty much boggled everything and so Ivan Reitman's son stepped in and he saved the franchise he realized where the heart is it's about the people not every character is supposed to be Peter Venkman there's only one Peter Venkman character that you can use and it worked and he put young kids as Ghostbusters and he actually noticed he needed somebody like Paul Rudd to stir the comedy drink and it worked it worked and I'm glad for it, too, because Ghostbusters is one of those franchises that should work. And I'm glad that Sony finally got their heads on straight and realized, look, we could sell this concept. It just needs to work. We just got, got to get the, you know, right. And I'm going to say this. I like, I like the, all the people that was involved in Ghostbusters 2016. Because I'm being a Saturday Night Live fan, seeing all these actresses from Saturday Night Live, was really cool. I mean, I can't think of their names. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I'll think of it after I'm off here. But yeah, seeing three of the actresses from Saturday Night Live in that, I was like, I mean, this is really going to be good, you know, because I like all three of those actresses. I'm not a big fan of, uh, I can't think of her name. It'll come to me later. I've edited their names. But yeah, seeing three of those characters or three of those women from that was great. I was like, man, this is gonna be good. It just it just didn't work that well. It didn't work out that way with the script too. The script was a major problem from what I've heard. I've never watched it, but one day when I find it cheap at a pawn shop or something, I'm gonna pick it up and just watch it to see how it went. I'm just gonna sit back and give it a fair judgment. But moving on, I picked up the Will Ferrell three movie collection. And uh, this has two of his movies I love. Step Brothers and Ricky Bobby. Talladega Nights. Oh, yeah. Drive it like you stole it, Ricky Bobby. <laughs> I, I love all those scenes where he's like praying, sweet baby Jesus. Thank, thank, thank you for my son, Walker, and Texas Ranger. <laughs> I like, I got me a Will Ferrell back in the 2000s had some good stuff. And I like Step Brothers. I, I've seen the other guys, but Step Brothers and Alligator Nights is my favorite. Another one I found at a pawn shop was Throw Mama from the Train, a classic 1980s comedy where a guy is trying to convince, wants to kill off his abusive mother. And it's just, it, it's comedy. Now this one, I had no idea if I have it or not. I'll use it as trade bait. But I'm pretty sure I don't. It's actually Final Fantasy VII, Advent Children. It's a two-disc set. It actually is the sequel to Final Fantasy VII, the game. And I love, uh, you know, I love Final Fantasy VII. And I went ahead and picked this up for a buck. And I was like, man, I'm going to go ahead and get it. The discs are in great shape. 
I'm pretty sure if, if I do have this, I could actually I'll use this as trade bait. Another one for a dollar I picked up was this deluxe edition of Pirates of the Caribbean. And this thing is heavy for us. I think it's a two disc set, actually. I believe it is a two disc set. Yep, two disc collector's edition. Yep. There's Johnny Depp. Yep. I always liked the first Pirates film. Then the Pirates films went off the rails. It become too it was just too much access going on. And another one I picked up is a classic 90s comedy. And there's talk about them doing a TV series, but one of the biggest problems is is Alec Grant Erickman is gone. He's passed away, and it wouldn't be the same without him. But here it is. It's Galaxy Quest with Tim Allen and Sigourney Weaver. I love T I love Galaxy Quest. It's probably one of the best 90s comedies. I like when, you know, he, he thinks he's part of this, you know, some fan film, and he just does it. It's pretty fun for that. Now, here is a nice horror film, and I've got almost every Evil Dead film except the first one, which is Evil Dead. Yeah, the Evil Dead. This is the uh, first film. I got Evil Dead 2, Evil uh, Army of Darkness. I've got the remakes, so now I've got every Evil Dead film. Uh, I saw this in there for a dollar. I was like, hey, I gotta, I better get this. I better pick this up before somebody else gets it. And Eddie, you'll be happy to know. You, you've always teased me. He's like, you've got to get, you know, why don't you have this Mel Brooks film in your collection? You've got Blazing Saddles. You've got um, Spaceballs. You've got History of the World. Well, now I finally got Young Frankenstein. Oh, yeah, Young Frankenstein. This is probably the uh, one of the best, funniest comedies. So I pretty much, I think I've got almost every Mel Brooks comedy, except the producers. And finally, the last thing I picked up, and I had to get a wrestling one, and this was really nice. And I love this homage to the Beatles, Sgt. Pepper. When I was picking up those DVD box sets in that one pawn shop, and the guy was cutting me a hell of a deal on these, I found this DVD box set called The Attitude Era. The Attitude Era, Volume 1. They had Volume 3, and I was like, yeah, I don't really, I just want to get the first volume. I don't think I need to get a complete set of it and it's kind of cool there's the there's the set i really love this and it's really nice you know the attitude era was i've told eddie i said you've missed a hell of an era buddy you missed a hell of an era in pro wrestling it was probably one of the most wackiest wildest eras that we'll never see again we'll never see that era again in pro wrestling it was one of those nice insane moments in time and uh, where Vince McMahon was throwing, you know, there, there's stuff thrown out there that you'll never expect ever. And you'll never see it again because not with the WWE being PG-13. And uh, I like pro wrestling. I liked it. I loved it in the late 90s. I don't think I'll ever get back to that vibe again. But uh, I'm kind of happy with the box sets I've picked up. I mean, if you've seen my pawn shop pickups and everything, I've picked up a lot of good wrestling. Uh a lot of good stuff that WWE's put out. And uh, I've already said it. You best get your box sets of this stuff. You best get your WWE sets because the company is stopping the making DVDs. They're going to go, go straight to streaming now. They've, they've said to, uh, there was a report that they're stopping DVD production. So best get these while you can. And that's why I'm happy to get them. Hey guys, and this is being clipped into the Pawn Shop Pickups volume out of nowhere because I picked up a couple movies with Eddie and I actually picked up one that he doesn't know about because I was by myself when I found it, but here we go. One of the movies I picked up from my Blu-ray collection and I only done it from my Blu-ray collection because I was trying to build a nice little collection of movies for it is National Lampoon's Vacation. Now, I had this on the DVD, the 20th anniversary, and this is actually the 30th anniversary anniversary edition, and it doesn't have a good cover. The cover on this is just so lazy and so awful. You know, I bet you if you showed this to Chevy Chase, he would be like, dear. I mean, I mean, he would probably insult this. Uh, the 
the cover to the DVD is just beautiful. It's a beautiful artwork. It's really great. I don't know why the Blu-ray release is so cheaped out like this. I mean, it's got it's good that it's got special features, but if you're sitting there, if you're that cheap to put that cover on here, it's it's not that good. And uh, I only got it for the Blu-ray, and it was cheap at the pawn shop. Now, three movies. Uh, one of the movies Eddie recommended that I get, me and him was together, and he's like, hey, it's a great horror film, you need to pick it up. I don't recommend horror films, but you'll like it. And it's called The Grave Dancers. And he said, hey, you need to get this horror film, you'll really enjoy it. So I went ahead and got it, off Eddie's recommendation, and uh, we'll see what happens with it. Another one I got, and these are two comedies now, and I like... I'll admit, there's one movie I've been looking for. It is actually Billy Madison. It's Adam Sandler goes back to school with Billy Madison. And uh, it's really a fun movie. And uh, I was I was watching a clip where they talked about Norm MacDonald drinking in this movie. And he's actually drinking. Because he said, hey, I'm, I've got to be drinking. If you want me to do this, I've got to be doing it. And, he actually, and they said he fell asleep in one of the scenes. He actually fell asleep. Because... He had been drinking, and that's really makes a fun, humorous story about the late Norm Macdonald. Brilliant comic guy, didn't give a crap. He didn't care, and you know, there's a lot of stories that John Lovitz and him told about Norm was not caring, you know, not to not to offend people. He just didn't care. <laughs> uh, too soon. Another actor that's gone, and he passed away about a decade ago, is the late Leslie Nielsen. And I got Naked Gun two and a half. Leslie Nielsen had a career rebirth after Air, uh, I think it's Airplane, yeah. Airplane gave him a career rebirth as a comedic actor. He showed that he could do it, and he was really funny. And as Frank Drebin, he was just perfect. Lieutenant Frank Drebin, police squad. <laughs> and I used to love, you know, I love the Naked Gun movies. It's a shame that. He only did three of them. I think he, they said it was, there was a, he was going to try to do a fourth one, but his health got bad, and he never was able to do the fourth Naked Gun film like he wanted. But he done a lot of good movies. I mean, Airplane, Naked Gun, uh, Dracula Dead and Loving It. I mean, he was just, he was just, he was just funny, a funny guy, I mean. Such a shame, but hey, his legacy will live on, just like Norm's. But yeah, that's all the movies I picked up. So that's it. That's my pickups. I hope you enjoyed this video and this latest volume of Pawn Shop Pickups. I know it's been a few weeks, but I'm happy with what I picked up, and I'm going to get to playing some Tales of Arise.